Welcome to Spice of Life Showtime. I'm your host, Shan Yu Singh, and joining me in the studio today, I have Professor Subramani and Joe Thomas. Welcome, Professor, and welcome, Joe. To, recently, there has been as many as five separate incidents, tragedy, if you will, resulting in fatality. Today, we will discuss the lessons we have learned and what we can do to further prevent these things from happening. Now, Joe, I understand that uh, you knew Monica Chetty, uh, who was one of the victims, and uh, you, she sought your help as well. And how did you feel about the situation she was in and uh, her passing a few days later? Uh, yes, Shania. <coughs> I'm a long-term resident of Liverpool area. I live in Campbell Street, and I go for a walk late in the evening. And in the past three months, I have often come across this lady who I believe is named Monica Shetty. Uh, she was walking around in Macquarie Street and George Street in a sort of wandering manner and seeking help from strangers. I noticed that she had a very serious injury on the right side of her face. It was either burn marks, but I believe subsequently it was established it was acid burns. And she would seek monetary help and I had given whatever help I could do on all occasions. Uh, about three weeks ago, I came across this news on Channel 9, that is, mystery woman has been found in Liverpool and the TV channel was suspecting that she is an illegal immigrant. Uh, it was also informed that, that she has been admitted to the Royal North Shore Hospital with uh, severe acid burns. Uh, Three or four days later, I again heard on the channel SPS that, that uh, Monica Chetty passed away. And uh, it was a very sad and tragic event that really could have been prevented. Professor, why do you think that this happened? I think you have to put this in a, a very broad context. When such uh, tragedies are enacted in public places, in parks and stadiums and so on, um, I read it as uh, a symbolic act mm -hmm. and symbolic acts are uh, subject to interpretation and my interpretation is that uh, statements are being made and these statements are addressed possibly to uh, the family and to the, um, the community and um, I'm told that uh, this particular person had visited uh, members of the community so uh, she was seeking some sort of support from the community and uh, the support has not been forthcoming either from the family or the community simply because I think both are dis have become dysfunctional. Uh, the Indo-Fijian family, the Indo-Fijian community is going through a, a serious transformation and uh, there are many, address many issues which haven't been properly addressed. Yeah, why do you think uh, that these issues are not being addressed? Simply because uh, there is uh, lack of dialogue there is a lack of communication and uh, there is no forum where people can come together and uh, see what is happening to the community. I think historically the Indo-Fijian community have been put together here uh, in, uh, in Australia, Liverpool and uh, they share a common history uh, and uh, therefore they should see as having a common destiny and they will have to address many of the very serious issues which are confronting the community and that is not being done. Mm -hmm. And until there is dialogue, until there is uh, uh, communication, until there is leadership, leadership, until there is a, a kind of a vision of uh, where the community is heading, you will continue to have these problems. And do you think that we as a community at large have failed, have failed victims like Miss Monica Chetty? We see, certainly have. I think the family and uh, the organization, uh, the, the community, um, they have both failed simply because uh, um, there is a lack of uh, uh, understanding or a lack of self-awareness. Uh, the community, the families are, are going through a transition and they are confused uh, what they really want, whether the community wants to integrate within the larger multicultural Australia or, or they want to assimilate, they're not too sure. Now assimilating means uh, giving up 
some of the values that we hold and uh, the identities that we have mm -hmm. uh, and becoming part of the larger melting pot. Or we want to integrate and retain our, our identity and uh, be part of the social life of Australia. So I think there are a lot of contradictions and these contradictions and confusions are reflected in individual lives. And uh, leaving the community aside for a second, what about what do you think, Joe, about the uh, the government um, officials and uh, organisations that could have helped Miss Chetty and they didn't? For example, the police. Yes, Shania. <clears throat> I think Australia is a very lucky country. It's a welfare state, and it has got very, very well established systems and departments. We have the police. We have the council. We have the migration resource centre. We have a center link which in-houses the Department of Social Welfare and then we also have got councils available free of cost. I mean, any of these organizations could have sort of noted this lady because she was wandering around for over three months and all that was required was to take her to the, the right department, to the right person. I mean, for example, she could have been taken to a social worker in Central Link and from there it would have been automatically picked up for all the other activities. The most critical one was to admit her to a hospital to ensure that her womb is attended to and healed. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it appears that, that, that almost all the departments either ignored her or did not notice her or failed her. Yeah, and uh, had the, the um, departments and officials intervened in time, do you think that Ms. Monica would be alive and with us today? I would say that, that, that if she was uh, picked up at an early stage and sent to the same place of Royal North Shore Hospital, she probably would have got healed and further on would have probably survived. Mm -hmm. Professor, I understand that Miss Monica was uh, taken to um, an indoor Fijian or peak organization, mm -hmm. but uh, she was not given the proper help um, from them. So, what what do you have? I think uh, she probably saw individuals, um, but uh, you know, individuals can do so much. Uh, I think uh, the larger community um, failed to act, and the larger community needs organizations, need, uh, need um, forums mm -hmm. where you know, these um, uh, matters can be addressed. Um, individuals can help one off, but uh, I think you, know, you would mention a series of cases, mm -hmm. not just one Monica Chetty, there are lots of other people, mm -hmm. and for these uh, you know, uh, matters to be, to be addressed properly, you need uh, communal support. Also, regarding uh, the religious organizations in and around our community, should they be doing more than just providing spiritual support and also providing us social support? I think, um, you know, you have to make a distinction between religion and spirituality in this matter. I think um, many religious bodies have reduced themselves to be, you know, conducting rituals like reciting and reading. And uh, they're less concerned with the uh, deep spiritual matters. And uh, I think when we look at deep, deep uh, spiritual matters, we'll um, know that uh, spirituality means caring, means uh, compassion, uh, means detachment, and um, it, it, it means um, uh, you know addressing some fundamental issues concerning the human condition. And I don't think we have really arrived at that uh, at level. I think we are caught up in the, the ritual level. And that is why we are not able to see the larger human condition. And the larger human condition for indo is that uh, history has thrown us here in Australia. And somehow you have to make some sense of our life. And we are not uh, being able to do that for a number of reasons. And one of the reasons is that uh, we don't have debate, we don't have discussion, we don't have dialogue. I don't think there's a communication mm -hmm. nowadays. Um, Joe, do you think that our community has learned their lesson and what do you think they're doing to prevent this sort of thing from happening? Yes, the community, as far as I know, 
has certainly been jolted by it mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I do believe that, that, that a number of steps are being now contemplated. The first thing that has been decided is that taking no action is not going to be a solution when a human life is involved. I mean, every life is precious and a citizen of Liverpool should never have this kind of a fate ever in future. In order to ensure this, the, the first thing that has happened is a few of us have got together and held a meeting and we have decided to have a panel discussion on a radio station called Radio Madhurima very shortly. We are going to have some very established members of the society, a cardiologist, a broadcaster and uh, similar professionals who were aware of this incident and who again, like me, failed to act and therefore we will have a panel discussion. It will be done on the radio station which has got 40,000 listeners and it's going to be an one hour program and we are very sure that, that this, the community will get a larger message in a broader spectrum. Following this, uh, we also have decided to call for a meeting of like-minded people who would like to volunteer their expertise, such as people who have counseling experience, will be available for victims like Monica so that she can go and get free counseling. There are officials, doctors, government servants who know the system very well and these people will in future use their knowledge of the system to take uh, victims such as Monica to the right department, to the right people at the right time rather than allowing a helpless victim to wander around with an open wound for over a hundred days. Yeah. So we believe that, that, that the message has been very very sympathetically and productively received by the community and the Liverpool community is now determined to ensure that this does not happen again. Because yes, we don't want to wait until it's a bit too late to attend to situations like these. Professor, what do you think? Have, has our community learned its lesson? I think there is always the danger of forgetting because there are so many incidents have taken place and people have very quickly forgotten. Yeah. I believe that something very profound needs to take place and that is we the community has to uh, come together uh, for a transitional period, not forever, for a transitional period while you know people are making adjustments here, families are making adjustments, the community is adjust making adjustments and then uh, you know debate these very profound issues that I, I, I raised, the issue of uh, whether integrating into the larger uh, Australian community uh, or, or assimilating. Uh, these are very uh, important issues because uh, unless you address these issues you are always in contradiction, you are in confusion. For example, the indo fijian community wants to retain the language, wants to retain the beliefs, want to eat the, the same food they ate in Fiji, they want to wear the same clothes and so on. So it's very clear they want to maintain the identity. At the same time, they want to be part of the Australian society, they want to be part of the materialism of Australian society. Um, and they're not sure which way to go. The younger generation is certainly very confused about the future. So there got to be some kind of a, a, a forum where people discuss these issues. And, um, you know, in enlightened communities, these discussions go on forever. So that uh, we don't forget uh, people like Monica Shetty, that we remember that uh, these tragedies have happened and that uh, these tragedies need not happen. So um, unless there is that kind of leadership and vision uh, which somehow you know, brings the communities together, I, I see these tragedies will continue to happen. Can the people work together with the government, so the community and the government work together to uh, prevent this? I think uh, definitely, but uh, I think it, uh, you know, uh, for a start, let's uh, help ourselves, and uh, we can help ourselves, and like we did, uh, you know, in Fiji, 
the Indo-Fijian community in Fiji was uh, received very little help uh, from the government, but uh, it stood on its own feet and educated the population. And, and that is one reason why a lot of us are here, because uh, we became an educated, enlightened people, uh, moved after the, the, you know, the tragedies that uh, they, they suffered there. And uh, therefore, you know, they have to begin to make some sense of their life here. And uh, unless uh, uh, they uh, feel this sense of belongingness or uh, experience, experience this, uh, this sense of having a common destiny and common history uh, and sort out the, the life of, uh, of, of, of families of the community, uh, we will not be moving forward. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Once again, thank you for joining us, and I'll be seeing you again next time.